Hello and welcome back to chapter 2. Today we're going to look at section 2.2 .2, which deals with basic differentiation rules and rates of change. For the first part of section 2.2 we're going to look at how to find a derivative of a function using the constant rule. Then we're going to look at finding the derivative of a function using the power rule and then we're going to look at the constant multiple rule as well. So to begin let's look at the constant rule. The constant rule says that the derivative of a constant function is zero. Okay, and something like a constant would be like taking the derivative of f of x equals three or f of x equals a negative five, something like that where you have no variable with your function. Um, and think if, I guess if you wanna think of a better way to think about it would be is if you were to go and graph it, then you're going to get just a horizontal line because it's really the same thing as saying y equals two or y equals negative six, something like that. It's, it will just give you a horizontal line through y equals whatever number. And if you look at this as a picture, kind of like what we have right here, we see that we have a horizontal line, and hopefully by now you remember that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Therefore, the derivative of a constant is also zero because the, the derivative of a constant is the same thing as the slope of a constant, which is also zero. So if we look at example one, part A, it says y equals seven, and we wanna find the derivative. So y prime then is equal to zero. For part B, we have f of x equals zero. So we can say f prime of x also equals zero. Part C, I have the function s of t equals negative three. The derivative of a constant is also zero, so we would say s prime of t is equal to zero. And if we are given the function y equals k pi squared, and k is constant, we know that pi is also constant, so the derivative of a constant, or y prime, is also equal to zero. Next, we're gonna look at the power rule. The power rule states that if n is a rational number and you're given a function where f of x is equal to x to the nth power, so if it's a, a function that you can take a derivative of, then when we go to take the derivative, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the exponent and pull it down up front, and then we're going to leave the exponent in the exponent spot, but then we're gonna subtract one from it. So let's just look at a mini example here. If I give you something like x to the third power, if I go and take the derivative of this, I'm going to take this three and pull it down front to give me three x, and then three to the three minus one is going to give me three x squared. So that's how the power rule works. Um, and then in addition to, for f to be differentiable at x equals zero, then n must be a number such that when you take and you subtract one from the exponent, it's also defined on the interval that contains zero. Now, with this power rule that we have, some people like to pull out a special case when n is equal to one. So if I give you a function, and let's just look at x to the first power. Now we know that the exponent on x is really to the first power. If I use my power rule, I'm going to bring this one down up front, which is going to give me one x, and then I have one minus one for the exponent. Or I end up with one x to the zero. Well, anything raised to the power of zero, I hope you remember, is always one. So one times one still gives you one, so the derivative of like something like a function like x or t is just going to be one itself. And that's really what this right here is saying. And you can prove that with a graph because if you have a graph of y equals x, we see that our slope is one and slope and derivatives are the same thing as a rate of change. So for example two, part a, it says f of x equals x cubed, we wanna find the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be, we're gonna pull this down up front, so we get three x 
to the 3 minus 1, which is going to give us 3x squared. So this is your derivative. Now for part b, I'm going to highly suggest that you rewrite your radicals. So I'm going to rewrite g of x as x to the 1 third. So rewrite your radicals as fractional exponents. Now when I go ahead and solve this, I'm going to pull this down up front. So we'll say g prime of x is equal to 1 third times x to the 1 third minus 1, which is going to give us one-third x to the negative two-thirds. And if you want, you can rewrite that one more time by saying that we have one-third and that x to the negative two-thirds is really going to move down to the denominator and become x to the positive two-thirds in the denominator itself. And that is a one in the numerator. So your final answer would be this right here. Now remember, on the AP test, you do not have to take it down to this last step. You could have left it right here. And finally, for part C, again, I would rewrite this and say that y is really equal to x to the negative second. When you rewrite it, it just makes it kind of easier to see what you need to do. So when we go to do our y prime, I'm going to take this negative 2 move it down up front. So I have negative 2x to the negative 2 minus 1, which is going to give us negative 2x to the negative third. And when we simplify that, this will give us negative 2 in the numerator. And we're going to move that x with a negative exponent down to the denominator or end up with x cubed. So we end up with negative 2 divided by x cubed. And that would be our final answer for part C. Now your book kind of had this little diagram here, and I, I thought it might be kind of helpful for you if, you if you wanted to look at it. If not, you can go ahead and fast forward to the next um, part. But it just kind of goes through the steps of taking your um, fraction with a variable in the denominator, rewriting it as a, a power with a negative exponent, and then when we take the derivative, it just kind of shows you the steps. So hopefully that helps you somewhat. And the last thing we're going to look at today is called the constant multiple rule. And the constant multiple rule says nothing more than if you have a differentiable function and you have some number c that's a real number, then if you take c and multiply it by f, if that is differentiable as well, then we're just going to take that number c and multiply it by the derivative, and that will be the uh, derivative of that function. So let's look at example 5. Example 5 says that we have y prime, and again, I'm going to write this as 2 times x to the negative first. So when I take the derivative, I know that I have to take this exponent, multiply it by the coefficient in front, which is going to give us a negative 2x to the negative first minus 1, which is going to give us a negative 2x to the negative second which is really a negative 2 divided by x squared. For part b, we really have 4 fifths times t squared. So if I go to take the derivative of that, or f prime of t, I end up with, we're going to take this 2, multiply it by the front, so 4 times 2 is 8 fifths, t to the 2 minus 1, which is going to be to the first, or 8 fifths t. Part c, I have 2 times x to the 1 half power. So this means that when I go to find y prime, I'm going to take this exponent, multiply it by my 2, 2 times 1 half is just 1, x to the 1 half minus 1, which gives me x to the negative one-half, and I can write that as 1 divided by x to the one-half, or you can rewrite that as 1 divided by the square root of x. Either one of these here I would accept. On your AP exam, however, I would just leave it right here. Now part D is a little bit, bit different because we can really rewrite this 
as one half, and I want to bring this here to my numerator. So I'm going to rewrite that as x. It's a fractional exponent because it is a root, and because it's the third root, the 3 goes in my denominator and the 2 goes in the numerator, and because it's in the denominator, I'm going to have to put a negative on it. So I really have at, or 1 half x to the negative 2 thirds power. So now when I go ahead and take the derivative of this, y prime is going to equal 1 half times a negative 2 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds minus 1. Now because you have fractions in your exponent, you are going to have to get a common denominator. So the common denominator for negative two-thirds and a negative one is the thirds. So we end up with negative two-thirds times one-half is going to give us a negative two-sixths x to the negative, and this is going to be negative two-thirds minus three-thirds, which is going to give us a negative five-thirds. Okay, and if we want to rewrite that, we can go a negative 2 6, which is really a negative 1 3rd, x to the negative 5 3rd. So this is going to be 1 divided by x to the 5 3rd. And you can leave it like that, or you can put, let's move this down. Oops. If you want, you could rewrite this as 1 3rd times the cube root of x to the fifth. And that's all in the denominator of the problem. And finally, part e, uh, it's just a negative 3 halves. So if you wanted to, you could really write this as a negative 3 halves times x to the first power. So when we go ahead and take the derivative, y prime, I'm going to take this one that's really here, multiply it up front, negative 3 halves times x to the 1 minus 1, which is a negative 3 halves times x to the 0 power. Anything raised to the power of 0 is 1, so we end up with a negative 3 halves. If you have questions on this, please feel free to let me know in class. And now for your daily fun fact, courtesy of foxtrot.com. Have a good day.